Hi everybody, it's Russ from My Hammers 11. I hope you are all safe and well. If you're new to the channel, obviously subscribe, hit the uh, little um, bell notification to make sure you're the first to watch all the all the new episodes we have coming up. And today's guest is uh, an author, is a journalist. Um, probably most importantly, he was one of the founders of Fortune's Always Hiding fanzine. It's Pete May. Hi Pete, how are you? Hi Russ, good to see you. We, 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 I think me and Pete, we, Pete was just uh, chatting beforehand. I think we last probably met properly was around 2002, 2003 with your Days of Iron book. It was in that, in that little, um, little room Jeremy Nicholas had, wasn't it? The DJ room. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's when I was writing West Ham Irons in the Soul, which is one of my books on West Ham. Indeed. With a pit Would pit. I do the Hammers in the Heart blog as well, by the way? Uh, if of course. Plugs in. Don't yeah. get as many plugs as you can in, Pete. It doesn't matter at all. <laughs> thanks for thanks for um, thanks for obviously taking the time. Obviously, what we're doing is interviewing lots of people, lots of different ages, um, all over the world. Lots of fans about sort of their memories of West Ham and also sort of going through their their Hammers Eleven. Um, so, so in terms of you, Pete, you know, being a West Ham fan for a long time, you know, what was your sort of earliest recollections of West Ham? Well, I think, I mean, the first game I went to was 1970, I think. I think it was October 1970, a long time ago, but I was about, you know, 10, I think. Um, and I mean, kind of a bit like Phil Whelan said on, on, on uh, the other night, you know, yeah. I, I didn't really have a team. My dad didn't have a team. And we explored, you know, all these sort of London clubs. And, you know, we had a look at but and and then yeah we we tried Chelsea as well I think and we tried West Ham and there was sort of something a bit a bit special about them uh, and it was just that period they just managed to sell Martin Peters and sign Jimmy Greaves <laughs> so we we got the alcoholic <laughs> and they got the World Cup with her but um, I, I don't know I think they were in a relegation struggle that season but just managed to stay up yeah right at the end so ever since then really I've been. I've been hooked and, and early memories, you know, I just remember like Pop Robson knocking in lots of goals one season and Billy Bonds, you know, looking piratical, running up and down the uh, the midfield. Yeah, of course. And and, 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 of course. and obviously, you know, obviously, you know, lots of lots of memories. Any any sort of fond ones which sort of stick out, um, you know, in, in, your, in your mind? Not necessarily games, but, you know, anything really, anything sort of fond memories. Yeah, well, I mean, I was lucky enough to see us win the cup in yeah. 75 and 80. So obviously that. That stands out, but I mean, probably things like the the Eintracht Frankfurt semi final in seventy six, when uh, Trevor Brooking scored twice and Keith Robson did. Uh, that was that was a fantastic game for atmosphere, yeah. you know, which got the West Ham through to the uh, Cup Winners Cup final, and a six two home win against Leicester. Oh, I've always never forgotten because so I was standing right on in the North Bank, just behind the goal. And uh, Bobby Gould, of all people, managed to get a couple of goals. And I remember him sort of celebrating right in front of me. Oh, how funny. Oh, that, that's the thing. You, you get these, <laughs> they get some, it's, it's the strange ones like those those games where, yeah. or, or a nil-nil draw against Coventry. And it's just like a little incident, but that sort of sticks yeah. in people's minds. I just remember Frank Lampard crossing, Bobby Gould heading in. And, and he actually, exactly. you know, he, he did fairly well for us. And then Alan Taylor suddenly emerged. And, yeah. He got dropped to the bench for the uh, the cup final. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant stuff. Right, okay, let, let's let's crack on to your your uh, your, your eleven. So I've got a feeling it's going to be a good one. Um, so obviously we try and we try and keep it. Uh, so obviously players that you were lucky enough to see alive. Um, yeah. So obviously I'm I couldn't put in you know Martin Peters. Um, I could put in uh, Marco Bugas. You know, almost. Yeah. Quite similar, uh, quite a similar swap there, um, and also you know it's your eleven, so you can be as creative as you want, uh, and and we try and keep it to a four four two, but yeah, the you know, rules go out the window when we start talking about football, um, and, and I believe Pete, you've got a nice uh, a nice theme for these this eleven. Yeah, well the theme is you know it's not the best team I've ever seen, but it's it's the players who've had my favourite uh, chance. Love it, you know. So anybody who's got a good song about them, I, I've put in. Okay, brilliant. That sounds really good. Let, let's start with Between the Sticks then. Who have you yeah, got? Well, I'll give you a clue. The goalkeeper <laughs> comes from near Moscow. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so it, it, it's got to be Ludek McCloskey in goal. Because, um, you know, much as I like Robert Green and Phil Parks, um, 
he has that wonderful song, My Name is Ludek McClosco, I come from near Moscow, I play in goal for West Ham. Uh, whenever I walk down the street, everyone I meet says, Oi, big boy, what's your name? <laughs> My name is Ludek Rinse and repeat, McClosco. yeah. <laughs> it just goes on and on. <laughs> Uh, I'm but I still, it's still sung. I mean, wherever yeah. I go, you know, sort of away. It games. is, yeah, away uh, games. They still sing it. I'm surprised you didn't go with uh, um, what was the one I used to love. There was a remember I went to a away day against away, away day against Liverpool, and and Shaka Hislop was in goal. And this guy who had a few too many um, too many sherbets next to me, and he was just cut of his own own chance. And he just had this one for Shaka. It was like Shaka, 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 Shaka. His lot, yeah. Shaq, yeah, it's like short but sweet. Short but sweet. It's the simplest ones. Good old Lou. Quite like England's number six for Robert Green, you know. Yeah. That or um, uh, we've got Bernard Lama. He smokes. Oh yeah, that is that is another great goalkeeper. Another chance. great one. But yeah, no, you're right. There's not that many for goalkeepers, is no. it? And of course, uh, and I think O level geography must have been quite dodgy <laughs> in, in Essex because you know the Czech Republic is about six hundred or yeah. seven hundred miles from Moscow. But. <laughs> Isn't it closer to us than it is to Moscow? I think. I think it's, it is. Yeah. So well, I did actually meet Ludo once, and he did. He did say it was very uh, inaccurate. Yes. <laughs> yeah. All right. We put we put Ludo. We put Ludo from Moscow in goal. Right. Who are we going to go for? A, a sort of the the left back position, then, Pete. Uh, well, left back. I'm going for Frank Lampard, senior, um, because. Uh, I mean, I saw us win the cup in 1980, yep. and he famously scored the winning goal in the uh, 1980 semi final. Yeah. And uh, he got his own song to the tune of White Christmas. I'm dreaming of a Frankie Lampard, just like the one at Elland Road, <laughs> where the ball came over and Frank fell over. And if I'm allowed to swear, I scored the fucking winning goal. <laughs> winning goal. <laughs> love it, love it. Yeah. And, uh, which, and a, you know, I don't think a left back will ever get a better song than that. Yeah. And it just seemed to sum up that way that he just sort of ambled up into the penalty area, not really looking like he knew what he was doing. Yeah. Yeah. Somehow managed to get his head on that cross and put it in. And then do the jig. Yeah, and then did the famous dance around the corner flag. So, uh, yeah, yeah, a lot of happy memories with that. Lovely stuff. And he and, 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 and played hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of games for us and I think yeah I think, and that's what's great about the, sort of this series is because obviously I'm learning a lot about the players that I never saw so mm. you know obviously no disrespect people people of your era talk very highly of Frank Senior and I was yeah. never around to obviously see that so it's almost like I'm learning the history a bit more through sort of more more sort of candid um sort of stories so it's lovely but yeah we'll put Lampard Senior in then Left back. Okay, who are we going to have on the other opposite side, the right back then, Pete? Well, I'm going to put Billy Bonds at right back. I could yep, have put him sure. at centre back or midfield, but um, I've got too many other players to fit in. Yeah. Um, Billy Bonds, uh, I think because he actually had three songs, you know, he had um, the one, my favourite was uh, Six Foot Two Eyes Are Blue, Billy Bonds is After You. Um, which seemed to sum up his uh, yeah. intimidating presence in midfield. Uh, but he, he also had um, Oh, Billy, 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 Billy Bonds. And, uh, of course, when he was a manager, he had Billy Bonds, Claret and Blue Army. Yeah. So, you know, he's, he's actually managed to inspire three... hatch songs. of songs, so, yeah. Very good. And if you were at the uh, Newcastle game recently when he came on and cried when the stand was named after him, I mean, that was that was a really moving moment. Amazing, wasn't it? You it was amazing. The, Particularly for a man who's... What the club who, Exactly, and a man who sort of never showed any emotion, really. Yeah, yeah. absolutely breaking down. And uh, yeah, I don't think there was a dry eye in in the house. No, oh, no, no, that was. Uh... There's always something in everyone's eye. Everyone has something yeah, in their yeah. eye. It's like this this swarm of dust cloud that's just coming over London Stadium. But yeah, no, yeah. It's, it's very special. And obviously, you know. Everyone obviously speaks so highly of Billy as a player. Yeah, and he was, and he was a quiet man off the pitch. Yes. You know, he was he was a bird watcher. He was actually a twitcher. <laughs> wow. And, you know, he was a very quiet family man off the pitch. Yes. He had this wonderful character on it. This little swashbuckling sort yeah. of. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Okay, with Bonzo on the right. Who are we going to have in the centre-backs then, Pete? Well, the first centre-back is a man called Christian Daly. Oh, <laughs> first time he's cropped up on the channel, so there we go. Yeah, well, um, I, I'd just like to say that I don't want him to visit my wife and do anything untoward. <laughs> but 
but he has the uh, the legendary chant of um, Oh Christian Daly, you are the love of my life. Oh Christian Daly, I'd let you shag my wife. Oh Christian Daly, I want curly hair too. So uh, you know, and that's to the tune of um, Oh Pretty Baby yeah. by Frankie v- Valley. Um, was it can't, can't take my eyes off you actually? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Official title, but it just seemed to scan so well uh, yeah. that song. And I just remember it being sung continuously at Charlton after a 4 0 away defeat. Uh, but I think the fans did actually like him. It's a tongue in cheek yeah. chant, but you know, he was a it was a trier and he always gave. Yeah, and I, I always remember that that's that sort of church churchill sort of type speech he gave on the pitch after the uh, after the Ipswich game. I believe when he sort of took to the mic and he said, "Yeah, it was it was almost like rallying the troops." Yeah. And he had that sort of, it was almost, it was almost, you know, Braveheart esque. You know, it was like, and I think yeah. he was, he was one of those players. I think you, I, I totally agree. Who has this sort of, sort of fans, fans favourite feel about them? You know, even when he comes yeah. back, everyone starts singing the song, a bit like Ludo, and you know, it's it's a it's a synonymous song for that period of time as well. Um, yeah, oh, that's that's right. Yeah, and, and I was really pleased when he came on as a sub in midfield in the uh, well, in both the cup final and the, yes. the playoff final in two thousand and five. So, you know, it's nice to see him actually lift that playoff trophy. Definitely, definitely. Okay, we'll put Christian Dale. Who's going to partner him in 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 the centre back positions then? Well, it was a toss up between James Collins and uh, Alvin Martin, but I've, I've gone for Alvin Martin in the end. But it has to be Alvin Martin towards the end of his career. Because uh, he then got his own song of uh, <laughs> he's got no hair, but we don't care. Alvin, Alvin, Martin. So uh, yeah, yeah. yeah I think a tribute to his baldness. You know that that gets him in, and he was a fantastic player. I mean, I can still recall behind goal. Him and Billy Bonds just had a you know fantastic game that day, and mm. Arsenal couldn't get past them at all. So you know. And, uh, you know, unlucky not to play more often for England, I think, mm. Alvin Martin. And then great to see his son last season. Of course. Or this season. In yeah. Goal, yeah, yeah. And, you know, break down at the end and run into Alvin's arms, you know, which is another tearful moment. A- again, yeah, there's been a couple this season yeah. <laughs> already, you know. So, yeah, no, and uh, yeah, a lovely guy. And I think, you know, you, you look at that back four, back five, there isn't going to get much change for the strikers, I don't think. It's no, quite no. solid back five. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Love it. Absolutely brilliant. Brilliant, Pete. Okay, let's go for the let's go for the midfield. Let's go for um let's go for a little left wing. Left wing, I've gone for here. Um oh, well, pretty um easy choice, Trevor Brooking. Yeah. Uh who I'd lucky to see see play for years and years. And he had his own song of uh Trevor Brooking walks on water, la 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 la, which, uh, God, what is that to the tune of? Um, Deck the halls, isn't it? Deck the halls. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, I think any any chant that, you know, attributes divine qualities yes. to uh, a West Ham midfielder has to be... Uh, has to be uh, worth going in and you know he, he was such a lovely man and you know I, I got a I went to one of his signings last last year actually and he was still really friendly and good with the fans and you know I got so so many good memories from the cup final winning goal and you know such an elegant cultured player so exactly, yeah, he'll go yeah. in, the, in the left and midfield and uh, and walk on water, which you know, in case this is very impressive. It's always a nice skill to have, yeah. See, he was a waterlogged pitch, you know, sort of yeah. mid January. Actually, actually, at the new ground, he could walk on the River Lee, couldn't he? <laughs> Just come across without going on the bridges, yes. <laughs> or going for the train, or going for the trains, or having to worry about sort of no, the stop, he start could get signs. To in ten minutes instead of twenty. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely brilliant. God bless him. Uh, and and yeah, I mean, by all account, obviously, he's sort of very much ahead of his time. Really, you know, quite a cultured player in a in a period which wasn't particularly cultured in terms of lots of sort of quite combative sort of midfielders and as he sort of yeah oh yeah and he was playing on you know mud heaps most of the weeks yeah and, and still you know produced incredible skill be good to see what, what he'd be like now you know oh, yeah the bowling greens exactly i know oh, right okay so we'll put uh put brook in on the left who should we put on the other wing then pete um the other wing the right wing i've got harry redknapp uh who you know most of us most people probably remember him as a manager, but yes. he was playing in the early 70s uh, before he got shipped off to Bournemouth. And, you know, he was a big fan's favourite on the North Bank. You know, and I, I just remember all these sort of skinheads in 
white lab coats and high leg DMs all singing, we've got Harry, 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 red lap on the wing. On the wing, we've got Harry, 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 red lap on the wing, on the wing, and then it would change pace and go to Harry, Harry, red lap, Harry, red lap on the wing. So it, it was a variation on a Harry Krishna chart. So uh, brilliant. And, <laughs> Harry right. Krishna and West Ham wingers aren't linked to too many. We've jobs. got we've got walking on water on one wing, and we've got yeah. Harry Krishna on the other wing. This is this has become this is divine midfield, quite literally. Yeah. Love it, love it, love it, love it. So, uh, yeah, that, that was, uh, you know, he was, uh, he was a local lad and I think yes. everybody loved seeing him yeah. race down the wing. But it, uh, his shooting was very erratic. I remember him hitting the corner flag once in one of his shots, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but just occasionally he'd get a really good cross in. Get one in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brilliant. All right. Lovely yeah. stuff. We'll put Red Nap on the other wing. Who are we going to have in the centres that's in the midfield? Oh, uh, well, sort of uh, defensive midfield, I'm going to have Mark Noble, who's had... Uh, a couple of chants and yeah. uh, I mean, the one I remember was uh, when he was playing against Crew when uh, he was 17 and he got um, Mark Noble, he's only 17, he's better than Mark Keane, but he's better than Roy Keane, yeah. Mark Noble, whoa, you know, <laughs> which I think is now um, Mark Noble, he plays in Carrot and Blue, he's West Ham through and through. Yeah, yeah. Which, uh, I mean, you know, it's a simple chart, but it seems to sum up the man. It sums up, it, it, if, if ever a chance is synonymous, yeah. it does sort of sum him up. He is Claret and Blue, you know. The yeah. best one, I think, was, um, I think one of the fun ones I had was, uh, was a Mark Noble, it was a testimonial at the, um, at the old, old ground. And uh, it was the tune of "It's All About You," which is obviously being used at the moment for the yeah. NHS. And it was it was it's all about it's all about Mark Noble, baby. I think it's Baz Cox came up with that. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, it, brilliant and 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 such a servant, <clears throat> a modern day servant for the club. Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously you've got your Bonzos and you've got your Martins for that yeah. sort of era. Very much, um, you know, one man club and you know playing better than he's probably played for the last four or five years, I think, uh, it's fair to yeah, say. Yeah, I'm thinking back, that was 2005, I think he was playing in that championship side and most came in for the playoffs. Exactly. Most Premier League appearances for West Ham. Um, yeah. And, um, yeah, brilliant player. And, you know, I think he's one of those players who will end up being a bit similar to the way Brooking was in terms of, you know, he stayed around, became ambassador for the club and da da da, da. I think when Mark eventually retires, he, he'll be obviously, you know, a coach for the academy or there'll be, yeah. he's going to be around. He won't be able to spend, you know, more than five minutes away from the ground when he's, when he's retired. But, no, no, I don't, and I think he's, yeah, he's, he's a leader, isn't he? I think yes. he'll, he'll, he'll have some sort of role, definitely. Yeah, exactly. Right, who's going to partner Nobes in the midfield then? Uh, oh, well, it's a controversial figure, but he had a good song and it's Dimitri Payet. Yeah. He had a, a song <laughs> both when he arrived and when he left. Yes. Um, <laughs> which uh, I mean, I, the, I remember a three-one win at Crystal Palace when I first heard the uh, "We've Got by It" to be three by it. Yeah. I just don't think you understand. He's super Slavs man. He's better than Zidane. We've got to be three by it. Brilliant, that, man. absolutely brilliant. Yeah, it's a great song, and you know, just for for like a season, he was just so out of the, the, this world with yeah. those free kicks. That were, you know, the free kick he got in the Palace game at home, where yeah. he just pinged it in the top corner and. I was lucky enough to be at Old Trafford when he scored that free kick in the FA Cup. He's, 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 a, he's a player that's synonymous yeah. with that last season at Upton yeah. Park. So he'll always be remembered for that. And, and also that, that chant, thinking it's all, you know, in terms of, yeah. bond, that's, <laughs> that's nicked by pretty much everyone now. Everyone, yeah, I think, it's, it's you know. Yeah, Ali, isn't it? And, exactly. And Ozil, they uh, used to, the Ozil sure. he was uh, for Arsenal as well. Um, yeah. You know, so whoever came out of that, was, was and to the tune of achy breaky hearts exactly so just, and then billy ray <laughs> cyrus had this sort of massive resurgence because you know yeah. not just his daughter but actually yeah. he, everyone was bothered about him now yeah our fans must have very eclectic musical taste yes and yeah. of course it was adapted to you've got some effing front yeah yes yes you money grabbing yes runt, I think was yeah, runt, runt yes yeah. yes <laughs> Yes, <laughs> uh, which was uh, that that Crystal Palace game when, when he just after he got on strike, you know, yes. it was rigging around the ground. So uh, yeah, it's it's a shame because I think a lot of people like you know have that sort of uh, th that tarnished view of him because obviously yeah. the way he left, but he he did it every club he he went to. Yeah. Um, he did it to come to us. He, he did the same yeah. thing. So it's like, what do you expect? But 
for for that sort of I don't think that season would that last season would have been as special if it wasn't for him. Do you know what I mean? In terms no, of oh, those, yeah, yeah. those memories. And looking back, yeah, it was, yeah, I think he dragged us up to what well, it should have been yes. fifth or sixth, but we finished seventh. Yeah, we should have easily. Yeah, I mean, yeah, on the last yeah. game. <laughs> exactly. Got sore that. point. Yeah. Exactly. Still, still hurts. Right, okay, yeah. lovely. Okay, that's the midfield. Who are we going to have up front then, Pete? Um, up front, I am going to have... Uh, First striker is going to be uh, a man who came from White Hart Lane and was uh, better than Jermaine, uh, yes. Bobby Zamora. So, uh, yeah, he well, he, he had a couple of chances as he well. Did. It started off with uh, the not very complimentary when the ball hits your head or the back of Rosette. That's Zamora. <laughs> but, uh, it then became a rather more complimentary chant of um, he came from White Hart Lane. He's better than uh, Jermaine Zamora. Whoa. <laughs> that was rigging around, um, you know, when we won the playoff final yes. in 2005. Um, you know, I'd always associate it with that. Yeah. Um, and it did just seem to uh, scan very nicely to that Zamora. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and 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 it's, it's one of those things when a player moves from one club to the other, you know, it's almost like you have to have a new song. Do you know what I mean? It's like yeah. he was always that, that Zamora, that when he was at Brighton and stuff. Yeah. It was almost like you had to have something new. Um, yeah. There's, there's there's other players you may probably say the last player uh, it might be that one but it, they come with certain you have to almost come up with a new or have a new set song so it seems different um yeah. and uh and yeah there's some more that was one which was you know and it, the whole thing was you know better than jermaine it was, it was perfect <laughs> yeah. it was perfect for him. right okay the z-man and, and the it was Z-Man. getting at jermaine as well so uh, you know that was the it was always another dig <laughs> we never forget <laughs> we never forget <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, how's Paul Lins this day? Right, okay. Right, okay. Zamora. Okay, who's going to partner Zamora up front then? Hmm. Um, the second striker up front is, of course, Paolo Di Canio. Um, mainly because he's got a chart that's um, it's uh, an adaptation of uh, an opera aria by Rigoletto, I think. Uh, of course. Of course. Donna yes. a mobile, or I'm not sure how you pronounce it, but... Yeah. Uh, uh, but yeah, Paolo Di Canio, uh, Paolo Di Canio. Again, perfect, so, perfect song. Yeah, it just it? seemed to scan, and you know, when that was yeah. ringing around Upton Park, you know, it was. Uh, it sounded poetic, it didn't it? Because it was almost like it was almost like a, you know, the, the way it echoed round in Upton Park. It was. Yeah. It had this sort of. It did have an operatic feel to it, because um, obviously he came from Sheffield Wednesday, where they mm. had the. It was it D I C A N I O, and so again, pressure to get a new song. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, I don't know who thought of it, but you know, that's the thing. Right. Who, who does think of these things? I have yeah. no idea. Um, my favourite one at the moment is the is, is Manuel Lanzini's, but unfortunately, he doesn't play at the moment. He's injured. But yeah. um, when they go, ain't ain't nobody like Lanzini. Lanzini. Yeah. yeah, he plays the West Ham way. Absolutely brilliant. And but someone must sit down and. Just jo- I don't know how a, how a chance starts, you know, eventually. No, no. And I mean, I, I almost selected Carlton Cole, you know, yeah. for the, um, <laughs> he's indestructible, you know, yeah. always believe in Carlton Cole. So, uh, you know, somebody, some Spandau Ballet fan out there, you know, um, invented that. Going to be, gonna be busy typing on that one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> exactly, the comments below. But yeah, yeah, I think pa- Paolo is the second striker, just for the simplicity and the and the culture of um, raiding some opera to, to get that child. And, and, and arguably, you know, probably our most influential player in sort of the, the 90s. Yeah, um, yeah, and, and, and sort, the sort of having... Him brooking and Payet in the same team, you know, is uh, and only ones and a little spark would kick off Payet and do it. <laughs> yes, yeah, <laughs> together. <laughs> Whether they'd actually all stay on the pitch, I don't know. But. And obviously, this is for home games, away games. You would have to put someone else in, and I think North. Yeah, Fortnite. yeah, yeah. He wouldn't, he wouldn't want to go up north. <laughs> exactly. Oh, bless him. So we got Ludo in goal. We got uh, we got Lampard senior left back. We got Bonzo on the right. Daly. And, and Alvin Martin in the middle. Then the midfield, we've got Brooklyn on one wing, Redknapp on the other, Noble and Pyatt in the middle. Zamora and Decanio up front. I think that's a great team. That's not a bad side, is it? And and in and in an era when, you know, when people say people don't chant enough, they've all got a song ready to go. Yeah, so yeah. 
even though they took five minutes each, you know, five minutes for Ludo, then five minutes for, for Lampard Senior, be perfect. And I think I'd probably have Ginger Pele on the on the bench, you know, with James Collins for his, uh, there's only one Ginger Pele. So exactly, that. yeah. We could definitely. go on and on, yes. You could, you really could. And I think, it, but I, I think you're right. I think these are probably, I would say, they, these are no, no sort of synonymous, you know, the ones and the most everyone yeah. knew about. I mean, obviously you've got, yeah, you could have the, yeah, the Colton Cole slash Joe Cole, whoever you want to include yeah. in that one. But the um, sharing about his chant, didn't he? He the... did. It was great. It was a great. Yeah, it, was, it was brilliant. Pete, thank you so much. That's been yeah. That's been lovely been, talking to you. It's been a love. It's been lovely, but also the the, the thought that's got into it. There's you know, <laughs> yes, that's what yeah. I love more than anything. <laughs> yeah. It's been really fun. I enjoyed thinking this up. Yeah. yeah, that is great. And I think with a theme, it's brilliant. Um, yeah, it's something got... to do during lockdown, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, exactly. And so, yeah, there's some, there's, I know there's some interesting themes coming up from other people soon. Um, so it's going to be good. So it's going to be good to sort of keep, in, keep on to the channel and see what else is, is being um, drummed up. And thank you to everyone else who's been uh, who's been watching obviously you know subscribe like you know whatever you want to do watch watch all of them on there there's gonna be a hell of a lot more coming up and um until next time thanks pete and and thanks everyone stay thanks safe everyone bye-bye